Hello, we find ourselves in the end of an awesome field using a new camera, new lens. And speaking of new cameras, you probably remember this. This is my Canon PowerShot SC600 I reviewed a couple of years ago. However, I also got this recently, the Canon PowerShot SD1000. And you might be asking, these cameras look pretty similar. Why'd you buy two of them? I honestly can't, don't have a very good answer to that question. But what I do want to test out today is a software called CHDK. It's for Canon PowerShot cameras and allows the cameras to become much more capable than they'd usually be. It's kind of like Magic Lantern, but for photos mainly. And well, the real reason I got both of these is because this camera has a Digic 2 processor and this camera is high resolution and has a Digic 3 processor. And now you guys probably all know how I feel about the Canon PowerShot SC600. I made a big video and it's honestly probably one of my favorite ca- It's honestly probably one of my favorite cameras in the world. However, if you watched that video, you probably remember me saying that However, disclaimer, this camera actually died because I brought it to the sand dunes. However, it actually is reasonably water resistant. And while it's definitely true, it's not actually the end of the world because there's plenty of these things popping up on eBay all the time. I got this example complete with a battery and card for $12. As for this Canon PowerShot 1000, SD1000, I got this for measly 10. The headline feature of this additional software is the ability to shoot photos in RAW. What this means is that the data is not compressed. This is a feature commonly found on DSLR cameras, but not many point and shoots. And you might be asking, this camera is not that great in quality, why would you want to shoot RAW on it? Well, there are some, definitely some benefits you can get out of shooting RAW, even on a camera this old. For example, noise reduction algorithms have gotten a lot more complex over the years. And the noise reduction in the camera from 2006 might be a bit lackluster. So while the RAW image may have more noise, you can rely on adding a more efficient noise reduction system to make the photos look a bit better in the long run. In addition, you capture more dynamic range this way, getting the most out of the tiny sensor. Before we get too crazy though, we should probably go over a review of these camera's features. First of all, the Canon PowerShot SD1000 is a 7.1 megapixel camera from 2007, while the Canon PowerShot SD600 is a 6 megapixel camera from 2006. The SD1000 is rather boxy and it's a design that I actually kind of like. I like the SD600's design, I like the SD600's design, but this just looks modern while being basically the same package. And speaking of the design, both of these cameras have viewfinders and basically the same set of buttons on the back. One reason why the SD1000 was so boxy though is because the version of this camera with a black ring around the camera lens was meant to commemorate the first Canon ELF that used APS-C film. In any case though, both of these cameras have a very industrial and durable feel, and they're both insanely small smaller than your phone is smaller than the mirrorless camera I'm using right now. Truly pocketable. There are some key differences here though. First of all, the Canon PowerShot SC600 only supports up to 2GB SD cards because of the Digic 2 processor, which released in 2004. However, the then brand new Digic 3 processor can support up to 32GB SDHD cards. Another difference is just the general speed of the cameras. Because this has a newer processor, it boots up a lot faster. In fact, I want to see if we can do a speed comparison. As you can see, this one was a bit faster. In addition, the SD1000 had a, has a more advanced autofocus system, usually uh, utilizing some sort of AI, I think. The screen is also the same size on both of them, but the SD1000 is slightly higher resolution. Other than that though, these cameras are fairly similar, and I think it's about the time we get shooting. Alright, so obviously there are some things I'm noticing about both of these cameras almost immediately. And if you couldn't notice, I'm recording on the PowerShot SC600 right now. First of all, the SC1000 has way better color science. It's, the colors don't look as washed out, they look a bit more accurate, highlights aren't as blown out, even though highlights all constantly get blown out, but that's to be expected. And obviously the Canon PowerShot SC1000 does better in most regards because, well, it's newer and has better tech. That's kind of to be expected. However, obviously this camera is a lot more sentimental to me, and this one I just happened to find on eBay for a bargain. Also, there's some pretty hilarious features of a CHDK, like 
Of course you got a bunch of stuff that I don't even know what the heck it does. You can read text files and apparently open stuff like that and on this camera. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But I think the most funny thing to me is if you go into miscellaneous, there's games. That's right. You can play Connect 4, Masterbind, Reversi, Snake, Sudoku, I mean Sokoban, and Tetris. Tetris is definitely the most uh, fun. And you have to do the play mode, of course you do. Yeah, we, we're going to be gaming on the calculator, aren't we? But that also isn't like the point of this. I think it's all. I think this whole program is basically to demonstrate how much uh, camera from a long time ago can really do today if you just give it the power to, you know, do it. And I like how I have my 4K camera sitting right here. I'm just like choosing to record with this one. But this camera has some nice features. But this camera is kind of cool, actually. It has these like a uh, nice retro feel, it makes old school photos and isn't really that great in any particular area, but it does succeed in what it was marketed to be, a point and shoot. Like, fun fact, this camera was $300 at launch, which was $50 less than the SD600 was when it launched in 2006. So this would be a pretty big deal if you just wanted to like wait an extra year to get this camera. But anyways, this cam this video is mostly about the CHDK, of course, and I won't go over how to install it or anything because, like, I'm not even at home or anything, but it's pretty simple. All you have to basically do is find the correct camera, the correct firmware your camera's running, copy some things to the SD card, and it basically just works. And basically, just like that, you have a camera capable of a lot of things that it wasn't before. Also, this is what the video quality on the SD1000 looks like if you have CHDK loaded and set the bitrate to 1.5x. It doesn't really make too much of a difference because this is 480p video and doesn't benefit too much from a bitrate bump, but it's kind of cool if you're into that thing. And it's nice that it's included with a program mainly meant for photos. In addition, this software gives you the ability to do something in video mode that you usually aren't able to do, which is optically zoom. And yes, the optical zoom is very loud, which I assume is why they left it out in the first place, but if you're using that sort of thing, again, it's there. So if you know anything about CHDK, you probably know that the community kind of was popular around like 2009 to 2014 maybe, and then hasn't had a lot of talk since. So you might be asking, what's the point in covering it now? But I think the point, I think the point is now is that we can better appreciate the older technology now that it's so cheap and accessible to people. I think we can also appreciate the time the developers put into making such an awesome program for frankly niche purpose. And I think you gotta admit, there's something pretty special about saying that this camera can shoot raw. Also, we are back home now. It's been a few days after shooting, but I think I can wrap up my conclusions on THDK and the images and, you know, that kind of stuff. First, I'm going to start with what I liked about CHDK. First of all, it's a program that's available to dozens of cameras, unlike something like Magic Lantern, which hasn't had updates since 2013. Secondly, the online user's manual makes it fairly easy to understand what this program does, how to use it, and how to use it in the way you can get the best photos. In addition, I think this can be a great way to getting a beginning photographer to understand how raw photography works, how to process raw photos, and how to understand the advantages of raw in the photography world. However, now it's time for what I don't like so much about THDK. First of all, the raw format seems to just mess up colors all across the board. I noticed that JPEGs and the DNG files look totally different, and in terms of color, the JPEGs almost always look better in superfine mode. In addition, it takes longer to save photos across the board. And unless you configure CHDK in such a way that it loads every time you turn on the camera, you're going to be stuck having to load it manually every time, which does kind of suck. I also noticed on both cameras that there wasn't a super appreciable gain in dynamic range either way. Sure, you got rid of some of the compression artifacts caused by JPEGing, but I don't think it would make that much of a difference in a scenario where you're normally editing your photos. Now, when it comes to processing your photos, I personally chose to use Darktable, a free software that lets you edit raw photos with a lot of options. Using the inbuilt noise reduction tool tended to actually yield better results than the camera could do by itself. In addition, the totally flat image gives you a lot of room to work with, and you won't have to suffer from crushed blacks that JPEGs usually have. However, CHDK doesn't work without a camera, and as for these two cameras that I tested here, I think it's safe to say that these aren't exactly the pinnacle of what CHDK is capable of. 
with the newer, larger sensor cameras from Canon, which the HD guy also supports, I guarantee you'd get much better results. At the same time though, that's also kind of the beauty of CHDK. This thing will work on a Canon PowerShot SD200 released in 2004, because it has a Digic 2 processor, and that's the lowest processor it can run on. And it runs admirably, to be honest. And the software can also run the Canon PowerShot G7X2, whatever the heck Canon calls it. That's quite a range of cameras the same software can work on. So you can get familiar with CHDK, and if you ever upgrade your camera, well, there you go. So photographers with these little point-and-shoot cameras that you may not care too much about, I think it's worth trying to find a creative use for them if possible. If anything, I certainly learned that it's really fun to do something different like that. Anyways, this is Calc G out.